everybody and welcome to the start of a new series on this channel. This has been a series that I've been thinking of starting for the longest time. A couple of people have suggested this to me over the years and today I have finally decided to start the League One Transfer Rumour Roundup. I got the inspiration for this series from the legend that is Ben HD. Obviously, he does the Championship Transfer Rumour Roundup, and I thought, seeing as there isn't one for League One right now, or from what I've seen anyway, there isn't one, I'll leave a link in the description to Ben HD's latest video of the Championship Transfer Rumour Roundup so you can check it out, get a gist of what this series is going to be. It follows a very similar format, and you can subscribe to Ben while you are over there. But a brief explanation, we are going to be going over the latest completed deals and rumoured deals that are happening in League One right now. I probably won't cover all of the latest ones because there obviously is going to be a lot of rumours linked. I've literally just wrote down a couple of them here. I don't know how concrete these rumours are. These have literally just been seen about the place on various news pages, news websites, and on social media. So I've just nicked them from those various platforms. So without any further hesitation, people, let's dive straight into this video. We will begin with the latest completed deals that have happened in League One over the last couple of days, and we will just whiz through them as quickly as possible. Shrewsbury Town have completed the signing of Bristol City striker Saiku Jene on loan until the end of the season. Swansea City forward Morgan Whitaker has completed a move to Lincoln. This deal has been spoke about over the last couple of days and the deal has now gone through. Whitaker had struggled for game time with Russell Martin's Swansea in the championship and he now comes down to Michael Appleton's Lincoln for a little bit of experience. Fleetwood Town have completed the signing of highly rated Ashton United midfielder Harvey McAdam. Burnley centre-half Jacob Badeau has completed a loan move to Morecambe until the end of the season. 19-year-old Norwich City striker Tom Dixon-Peters has completed a loan move to Gillingham until the end of the season. Defender Michael Bostwick has today completed a loan move to League Two side Stevenage. He leaves Burton Albion until the end of the season. The longly anticipated move of Trey Hume from Linfield to Sunderland has finally been materialised. That deal went through earlier on today day in a fee believed to be around £200,000. I don't know an awful lot about this guy, but there has been a lot of hype about him. I know a lot of clubs were in for this guy. 19 years of age, right back I believe he is. And one club that has been quite busy in the transfer window already in the first few opening days is Bolton Wanderers. They have already completed two signings. Dion Charles on a permanent basis from Accrington Stanley and Marlon Fossey on loan from Fulham. Two very decent bits of business from Ian Evitt's side. Dion Charles I think is a fantastic pickup. This is one that has been talked about. He had been linked with a lot of clubs over the last couple of days but the deal has been finally done. It is a believed to be around £300,000. But while he hasn't had the best of seasons for Accrington thus far, we know what he can do at this level. He bagged 19 goals last season and I think he will prove a big, big addition to this Bolton side. And as for Marlon Fossey, again, it's a very decent signing. He has previously been at League One, I believe, last season with Shrewsbury Town, right back age 22. So still relatively young. He's got age on his side. And again, will be a pretty decent option for them in the defensive line. Again, as I say, League One experience. So there are the latest completed deals that have gone through in League One so far so without any further hesitation let's dive into some transfer rumors so we will be kicking things off with Patrick Roberts who is looking very likely to be joining Sunderland on loan until the end of the season. The 24-year-old Manchester City winger looks set to cancel his loan spell at French First Division side Troyes to make a move to Wearside. Now, this one is a very interesting one. It has been spoke about a lot over the last couple of weeks, but it looks very likely that this one could go through. I don't know what to think about this deal, really, because if you take a look at Roberts' statistics, since he left Celtic to join Man City... His stats definitely leave something to be desired. You know, they're not the best of statistics. Obviously, he has had previous spells in the championship. I believe he was with Middlesbrough, I think, in the 2019-20 season. He's since gone to Troyes this season, where he has featured only once in League 1 so far this season. So he is really struggling for game time. I think if fully fit and given a chance to play... He could definitely do well at League One level. I would definitely keep an eye on Roberts this season. I think he could definitely offer Lee Johnson's side something this year. There has been one Sunderland player that has been attracting a lot of interest over the last couple of weeks. And that, of course, is their youth prodigy, 
Dan Neal. It has been reported that Burnley are supposedly interested in making a three million pound bid for the Sunderland player. This does come after their clash with Arsenal in the Carabao Cup recently. Obviously, they did receive a bit of a battering, but Burnley were in attendance at that game at the Emirates and were supposedly impressed enough with Dan Neal that they are apparently looking to make a £3 million bid. Now, a Sunderland spokesman did come out recently and said that they are looking to keep hold of their most valuable assets. I suspect that to be the likes of, you know, Dan Neal, Elliot Embleton probably will be under a lot of interest this window as well. So there is very promising from a Sunderland perspective. You know, they are looking to keep hold of their key assets. And to be honest with you, with this deal... I don't really expect there to be much substance to it. But if Neil was to make the move to Burnley right now, obviously he would be getting Premier League football for, I guess, a limited amount of time. But that obviously does depend if Burnley do stay up, which could be a potential pull factor in this deal. You know, obviously if Burnley do stay up and if Neil was to go now, obviously he'd be trying to help them stay up. But if Burnley do stay up, it's obviously Premier League football. If they go down, obviously he has the... I guess four or so months of Premier League experience and then he comes down to the Championship where I suspect there'll be a mass exodus of Burnley players. So Dan Neal may very well be a big part of Burnley's team in the Championship if he is to make the move there. But then again, obviously Sunderland could well go up. So you could say there's not really much of a point with this one. And like I said, I don't think this one is likely. I think Neil will end up staying at Sunderland. But I guess it is a case of whether Burnley do actually make the bid, whether Sunderland want to cash in and whether Neil actually wants to make the move. Because obviously the wage package that he will receive at Burnley will be significantly more than what he will get at Sunderland. There's no doubt about that. But yeah, personally, I can't see this one going through. Wigan Athletic are in the market for a new striker as they look to replace Charlie Wyke. Of course, it is absolutely horrific what has happened to Charlie Wyke. Obviously, collapsed in training, I believe, last month or maybe the month before. But it is absolutely horrible what's happened to him. I wish him a speedy recovery. Wigan are in the market to replace him. One name that has been mentioned is crew striker Mikel Mandron. And this one doesn't surprise me, really. Crew obviously, will be under a lot of pressure to keep hold of their key players. Obviously, the situation they're in right now, they're sat second bottom. They look almost destined to go down, really. They've been shocking this season, and they're going to be wanting to keep hold of their key assets. They lost a lot of key players in the summer. Obviously, Charlie Kirk, Owen Dale. Mandron is certainly their star man. He scored 11 goals for them last season. So far, he's bagged five, and obviously did score a fair amount of goals with Gillingham as well before making the move to Crew. So he is a very proven League One striker. Not surprised by this rumour whatsoever. I do believe Mandron is out of contract in the summer, so Wigan, I'm not surprised that they are interested in this one. And to be fair, I can actually see this one happening. It's a massive blow for Crew if this one is to go through, but Wigan know exactly what they're going to get with this sign and a proven League One striker. Portsmouth striker John Marquis has been made available for sale as the Cowley brothers are looking to freshen up their attack in the second half of the season. I must admit, when I first saw this, I was very surprised to hear that they were going to let Marquis go. He's bagged four goals so far for them. Last year, he bagged 16. The year before that, eight. So he is obviously a very proven scorer at this level. Obviously, had a fantastic spell at Doncaster as well before joining Pompey. He is a very, very good League One striker, but I can understand why the Cowley brothers are looking to freshen up their attack. Obviously, Portsmouth are looking to make a push for the playoffs. They're currently set eighth at the moment. And Marquis being 29 now, he's aging a little bit. I can definitely understand why they're trying to move him on. There is no doubt in my mind that Marquis will be a wanted man by other League One clubs. I suspect a lot of them will be sniffing around him. Could he make a return to Doncaster? Who knows? Another Portsmouth striker that has been linked with a move away from Fratton Park is Ellis Harrison. Shrewsbury Town, Fleetwood and Bristol Rovers are believed to be interested in the Welshman. Shrewsbury manager Steve Cottrell did actually today come out and debunk this rumour. So it is believed that Shrewsbury are not interested in the player, which does leave Fleetwood and his former club, Bristol Rovers, interested in him. Bristol Rovers would be the one that makes the most sense for him to move there. Obviously, since he joined, uh, since he left Bristol Rovers, sorry, to join Ipswich and then moving to Portsmouth, his game time and his goal contributions have not been that good, to be honest with you. He's played 11 games so far this season while failing to register a goal. So he is, 
I'm not surprised that he he has been linked to a move away from the club. And to be honest, I think moving to Bristol Rovers would probably be the best for him. Obviously, going back to a surrounding that he knows. Fleetwood, if they were to go in for him, obviously they are under a transfer embargo at the moment. And they are losing a lot of their attacking options. Ryan Edmondson has already left the club. He's gone to Port Vale after being recalled by Leeds. They do look set to lose Callum Morton. At least that's what COD's vlogs Ben Knapman has said. So, obviously, I'm not surprised that they will be in the market for a striker. In terms of Ellis Harrison, obviously, it's certainly a game with his goal record over the last couple of years. In terms of potential players joining Portsmouth, they are supposedly interested in Cheltenham Town centre-back Will Boyle. This rumour comes after Nicky Cowley was spotted at Cheltenham's away draw with Oxford at the Cassam Stadium. They drew that game one all. They are supposedly interested in the centre-half who was attracting a lot of interest in the summer. I believe Rotherham, Sheffield Wednesday and Charlton were among the clubs that were interested in Will Boyle. Obviously, he had a very successful campaign with Cheltenham last season. He made the PFA team of the year in their title winning campaign. I'm not surprised that he has been interested, that he has been again linked with other top League One clubs. It will be a massive blow for Cheltenham if they were to let him go. And Pompey are also interested alongside Cholton and Bolton in the signing of Rotherham United winger Kieran Sadlier. This one was spoke about I think last week and it's since gone a bit cold to be honest with you from a Cholton fan perspective. I don't, I'm not all that keen on this signing, to be honest with you. Obviously, he hasn't played an awful lot of football for Rotherham this year. I think he's played only 11 games, started five and scored only one goal. Plus, he's in a position that we don't really need. We've already got four wingers in our side. Charlie Kirk, Dialang Jaisimi, Jonathan Lecco and Corey Blackett-Taylor. So, it wouldn't really make sense to bring him in. He can play through the middle, but... Yeah, I'm not all that keen on that signing. It does seem that Bolton are the more likely to get in. Are supposedly eyeing up a move for him. Charlton and Portsmouth were merely just mentioned as interested. So, like I said, I don't know how concrete this rumour is. Sadly, I is out of contract, I believe, in the summer. So, it's more than likely that he will be leaving Rotherham. Especially when they look like they're going to go up to the Championship. Obviously, he had a very serious injury in the Championship last year. And speaking of my club, Charlton, Harry Artar has been sent back to Nottingham Forest. Which I am not really bothered about in the slightest. He featured only five times for us this season. I know he suffered an injury during this course of the season, but unfortunately, it is just another prime example of a lone player that we've brought in that has been massively hyped up. I fell into that category as well. Someone that massively hyped up Harry Arta. And he's come to this club and not played. An absolute waste of wages, to be honest with you. I spoke about it in my previous video. And yeah, this one has finally materialised. Harry Arta has gone back to Nottingham Forest. I don't know if he's going to play regular football for Forest. I guess that is up to Steve Cooper. But yeah, not entirely bothered or surprised by his departure. A whole host of EFL and SPL clubs are interested in Philadelphia Union centre-half Stuart Finley. Portsmouth, Sheffield Wednesday, Plymouth, Oxford, Barnes. Barnsley, Blackpool, Preston and Hibernian and Hearts in Scotland are all interested in bringing in the defender. Portsmouth today came out and said that the rumour for Finlay coming to Fratton Park is completely false. The 26-year-old Scottish defender moved to Philadelphia Union, I think, a couple years ago. He has struggled for game time over in America. While he does say living in America has been a dream of his, the regular football is the missing piece of the puzzle. Personally, I can't see him moving to a championship club. I don't think Barnsley, Blackpool or Preston would be a likely destination for him. Maybe Barnsley with them in a bit of a relegation scrap looking set to go down this season. I think League One or a return to Scotland would be probably uh, the most likely destination for him. Swansea boss Russell Martin is planning to raid his former club, Milton Keynes Dons. Goalkeeper Andrew Fisher and midfielder Matt O'Reilly are the latest two players that are said to be linked with a move to Wales. Not entirely surprised by this, obviously, Martin did bring in a former player of his last season to uh, the Liberty Stadium, that of course being Ethan Laird. He was brought in on loan from Manchester United last year to the stadium MK where he impressed massively. He was then brought on to Swansea this year, but recently he has been recalled by United and looks set to join Bournemouth. I'm not entirely surprised that Martin is obviously looking to bring in players from his former club. Andy Fisher will be a good option for them in between the sticks. Obviously 23 years of age, he's got age on his side and I believe Ben Hamer has not been performing well for them at the moment, so definitely will give them another option. And as for Matt O'Reilly, his record speaks for himself. You know, he's been absolutely 
absolutely fantastic for Don so far. Six goals and four assists so far this season. Only 21 years old. I think one of the best under-23 players in the league at the moment. So I think if he is to go to Swansea, it'll be a massive blow for MK Dons, but a big step up in his career because I think he definitely is one for the future and could definitely do a job in the championship. Bolton Wanderer striker Owen Doyle looks set to complete a move to Irish Premiership side St. Patrick's Athletic as he looks set to go there and finish his career in his home country. Obviously, 33 years of age, he is ageing. Had a fantastic season with Bolton last year, scored 19 goals, their top scorer. This year has bagged five this year, so not an awful return, but with the addition of Dion Charles and with the other options they've got up front, I'm not entirely surprised that Doyle is making a move. Ian Everett did confirm that conversations are currently ongoing, so this one could happen within a matter of days. And while St. Pat's looks set to sign a player, they do look set to lose one. Their midfielder, Adam Lewis, looks set to join Plymouth Argyle. It was reported today by the 72 that he is having a medical today, or had a medical today, should I say. He is coming over from Ireland, having played 31 games for St. Pat's last season, scoring three goals. And then to wrap up the first episode of the League One Transfer Rumour Roundup, we have Lincoln City midfielder Connor McGrandles. He has been linked with a move back to his home nation, Scotland. Hibernian and Aberdeen are said to be interested in the player who is out of contract in the summer. I don't know what to make about this one, really. Obviously, McGrandles was one of Lincoln's most influential players last season, I'd say, in their playoff final campaign, obviously losing to Blackpool. This season has been a pretty disastrous campaign for Lincoln so far. They find themselves in the bottom four currently at the time of recording. It is looking likely that this one could go through. It has been reported, I think, for the last couple of weeks. It is quite... Uh, I am coming I am coming in quite late to this rumour, but yeah, would be a massive blow for Lincoln in my opinion if this one was to go through. So that will wrap it up for today's episode of the League One Transfer Rumour Roundup. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you are new to the channel, and turn on those post notifications so you are notified of when I post a new video. What do you guys think of this new series? Let me know in the comments below. As I say, a couple of people have suggested this to me over the last couple of years, and I've finally decided to get it started. I will try to do it as regularly as possible. Possible. What do you guys think about the completed deals and the rumours within this video? Let me know. Have I missed any out? Let me know. This has been Tyler Rowlinson. Have a nice day and I will see you all in the next video. Be sure to leave a like on this series so I know that you guys like this idea. Take it easy, stay safe and I will see you all later.